What's up, YouTube friends? My name is Pai, and on today's episode of Constructive Critique, we have Sitlali Rico of Sitlali Rico Photography out of Cancun. Yes. So, okay, thank you. yes, and welcome to the show. So, Sitlali specializes in wedding and portrait work. She's an incredible photographer, does a lot of her work out of Cancun, as well as a lot of destination stuff. So, we're doing basically destination wedding and portrait photographs as our topic today. But really, these are just photographs that are outside. They could be anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what we're doing today. That's awesome. <laughs> outside portraiture. So we're going to jump in. Now, we are going to talk a little more at the end of this. Silali has some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, you have a Patreon account where people that speak Spanish can actually learn photography through you. We're going to include the link for that. She also has some upcoming workshops in Europe and where else? Mexico and Europe. Just Mexico and Europe. Okay. So we're going to post links to that as well. But for now, let's dive into our verbal bashing. All right. So we have Aaron Tremblay of Aaron Tremblay Photography. You got this? Oh, yes. I almost forgot to tell you about our rating system. Okay. Have you seen I it? Hear about that. I've seen it, but I want to learn the rules. This little time. little refresher. Yeah. Okay. So for those that are at home, here's how it works. It goes from one to ten. This is based on our awards rating system. Anything that's a one is basically a shot that really hasn't been thought about. It's a shot that you might have taken on your phone or with a professional camera, but you didn't really put any work or thought into it. It is basically just a snapshot. Anything around a five is a professional photograph, and it's kind of what we would expect our peers to be doing. So it's what the average professional would do. So when we give something a five, it doesn't mean that it's average. It means it's what we would expect a pro to do. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. Course. That way it's not like it's just average. When we give something anywhere up in the seven, eights, nines, and up to a 10, well, that means you're thinking far beyond what a professional or the average professional would do in that scene. You're doing a lot of extra things to get to that shot. And a 10 would be an image that needs no work. It's award-winning. It is incredible. Congratulations. Awesome. We've only given out like one of those, I think. Okay. We actually had a couple okay. nines on our, our last critique though, so. Oh, nice. Good. So. Let's do this. Let's see how critical you are. So we're going to go three, two, one, and then we're going to give our rating. So look at this shot. This is Aaron Tremblay of Aaron Tremblay Photography. Uh, okay. See, Lolly, do you have a, a number? I do have a number. Okay. Three, two, one, six, five. We're, we're pretty close on this. Hey, that wasn't bad. Okay. You're my guest, so give it to me. What you got? Thank you. Well, um, it's great what you're like what the photographer is trying to do here is like setting up two lights is not an easy thing like mm -hmm. taking the time to I guess it's on the wedding day yeah um, just taking the time to like ask the couple to come outside and the twilight and all these things like it's it's good it's good what you're doing it's just the light is not working for me in this photo the composition also it's a little bit tough because mm -hmm. I get that it could be a destination wedding because it was outside a barn and all this, but you just have to be like very thoughtful on what kind of elements are you including in the photo. And if you decide to have like a big chunk of grass, mm -hmm. at least make sure the grass is nice. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like these dead patches. Exactly. So either you just go up, like higher up and show me that beautiful blue sky or like just choose a different place. Um, I understand that the barn was kind of like the main idea, but the light, as I said at the beginning, is not working because the couple is not very well lit. Mm -hmm. They're they're and very uh, dark in the front, right? Yes. Yeah, we need like a, a like different setup for lights, and uh, it's just like leaving the lights there, like just the, the actual flashes without the tripods. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I, I agree, and like I don't know if this is, and it looks like they did Photoshop the stands out and everything. Um, and it's a lot of work because it's not a, like it's not an easy job to Photoshop the stands from those lines. And for sure, but it does look like it looks like what's really well lit are these like you know things of hay in the background. Yes. Um, I'm said Lolly, I'm not trying to draw obscene things. I'm gonna do that. I was that. gonna ask you like what. Are <laughs> What am I? I'm a terrible. You're a photographer. I'm a terrible artist when it comes to anything 
that is not taking pictures. It's okay, um, you're trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Okay. You're making me cry. Okay. 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 But like the, the, the hay is lit up really well. The couple is like really dark. Um, and I don't know that I would use this, you know, this kind of lighting pattern for me, when you put a light up on both sides and you kind of light in, I would call that like stage lighting. It's lighting that you're using, like kind of like create like a dance floor or a stage or something that like an event type lighting setup. It feels very unnatural to me to use that lighting setup in a barn, you know, like or in front of a barn where it's not the right scene for that. And so what I might have done personally is brought the couple up, like maybe had them stand here, worked in with a tighter crop and put a light directly behind them and shot bottom up on this barn and kind of framed them so like their heads were like framed against the dark part of the barn and you see the top part of the barn, you see the sky and that's really it. That's my person, by the way. You see it? That, that works. Oh, that's... Uh, well, it's happy. We need two of them, but I'm so happy they're happy. Yeah, I totally see what you're saying. Um, it's just the light is kind of not working for me in this one. <laughs> that works. Is that that's better? Yeah, very nice. It's more like a <laughs> mother and her child, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> oh okay, yeah. Okay. I like it. <laughs> let's go on to Adrian yeah. Ong. Let's make a memory. Let's okay. let's make a properly sized photograph for critiques. <laughs> Guys, if I would have actually held y'all to the 2000 pixel standard, we would have had no images for this critique, so. Well, some, some definitely. Some people did their homework, but yes. We expect better, Adrian. We expect better. Okay, so I know this spot. This is out in Laguna Beach. Um, mm. Okay, you got a number? I do. Okay, ready? Three, two, six, six. <laughs> Good job. On point. Okay. On point, yeah. Um, should I go first? You go. Okay, uh, well, composition wise is like so not balanced. We have like a very, very heavy right side of the frame, and the left side is like there's not much going on. Like, yeah. It's a beautiful sunset, but we just kind of have to decide if we like don't go right in the middle just because that's where your focusing area is um i like this can... critique by the way because i've literally taken this exact shot our, our team is known for this exact shot so this is like okay. let's okay. let's hear this so, let's, yeah, let's no, no, no 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 you don't no don't back it up give it to me girl no, i'm not i'm not <laughs> I'm, up. I'm just saying just ask your couple to move to the left okay uh, or also, like when when we backlit couples, like we see that a lot. It's so often. So if you're gonna do it, um, at least make sure the background is like dark, just yeah. so they. So you could have put them like right where all the rocks are, like what this uh, tower is, or just go a little bit higher so they are perfectly framed in like the dark area in the background. That's kind of my goal here. I love it. I love it. So. When we typically take this shot, we would actually place the couple right here. Yes. How do you feel that about that? Sense. I think that's a very good spot to, to frame them. And uh, like we're talking about destination um, wedding photos or destination portraits. And this is like a really cool shot to show the place. And I think we're going to be talking about this a little bit later on. But it's very important that we have these kind of photos for our clients where, when they're deciding to have like a like a wedding or their engagement session in a place that it's like very beautiful, right? For but sure. we can't forget about the couple. So we also have to put a lot of effort on how we pose them. Like yeah. it's like the hardest is always to find like the good location. And then the easiest is later just to to do the little tweaks so the the the, the, the connection between the couple works. And just asking them to go and stand there and look at each other is like the like it just a little boring. Your photo not being that amazing. Yes. What what pose would you have done in this spot? Um, I would just try and make like them do something mm -hmm. because they're so far away that the only way to to kind of feel a little bit for them is when there is a little bit of action. I so, agree. I would love that. I don't know how like rough like that that ground is and if it's easy to just dance or move or. But at least I don't know. Dancing. A bit of separation or something. Dancing might be tough, but something that works really well in this spot is like a lift. Um, you know where oh. he lifts her, 
Um, cause his feet can stand pretty flat on that. I, I would think there's going to be trouble with her like twirling or doing something, but I agree with you that going back this far, you really need their silhouettes and their form to kind of tell the entire story because you can't see anything else. You know, it's really about the landscape and about what these two people are doing in the landscape. And right now, um, they're just looking at each other, which isn't, isn't bad, but I agree with you that, that it can be a lot better. Should we go on to Anna Davis Yancey of Elements Images? Sure. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I got a number. Okay. You got a number? I do have a number. Three, two. All right. I'm sticking to my six. My three first ones. Six is your happy place. That's my, I know. <laughs> I wish my happy place was like nine or ten. <laughs> but we're getting there, though, because it's sort of like having a six is like, it's a, like a photo that works for the clients. They look fine. They're receiving a good image. Mm -hmm. but like a two would be bad, right? So six is, <laughs> two would be yeah. very bad. <laughs> like six is something that it's like, it's a picture that I will take, I guess. Like we all would believe or something like this. Yeah. Um, like for, like I like um, these kind of photos that are a little bit moody. We have a beautiful backlight. Um, it's just for these photos for me to like, to make me feel something, I always ditch the flowers. The flowers kill me. Mm -hmm. Like he's kind of into her. She's not because she's not like, there's no connection. I know that we need to have some photos with the flowers in the pictures, but I normally try to do just the, the ones that are, they're looking at the camera. Yeah. Where it's like a really like standard portrait. And then when it's about them and connection, I just make sure that the, the hands are always connected just mm -hmm. so I can feel them a little bit more. I agree. You need to have those touch points. Yes. Right now, their hands are just dropping down. What do you think about, like, if, if she was holding the bouquet with the left hand and she draped it up over his shoulder right here and kind of was holding on like this? Um, so it was part of the shot, but like they were still connecting up. How would you feel about that? Um, it could work. I mean, the thing when you're like, when the bride is holding the groom like that, it's a little bit tough because they're like the, the arm becomes something very like big and important in the photo. Mm -hmm. So right now I kind of like the way they're like holding each other. I just wish she was also holding him. He has a great expression and her expression is not that great. Mm -hmm. Like it's not matching his. So that's why uh, I'm just a little bit bummed about it, but uh, I love the light. I do too. Um, I, I do wish also that they had draped the veil a little bit better where it kind of wraps up on the right side too. Yes. So we're not seeing this like, you know, it's just so clear on this side and the other side is like so nice and dreamy. Totally. Like you can even crop it a little bit. So it starts where like his back starts and then go all the way mm -hmm. without showing all the green on the right. Mm -hmm. It would be stronger for sure. Okay. This is from a friend of ours, Chad de Blasio of de Blasio Photography. So we have to like destroy Chad. Okay, so Chad, your photo is 960. First of all. So I think Bai is pretty mad about it. First of all, I mean, come on, dude. Right okay. there, point number one, 2000 pixels. Okay, I'm gonna give it a one just for that. All right, you ready to give this a number? Um, I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, Chad's gonna hate me for this, but all right. No, un unbiased, gotta be unbiased. You ready? Yes. Three, two. Okay, you're going five, I'm going to four. I'm going five. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of delay there. But um, for me, it's like when we're using flares, which are like pretty cool and could be very, very awesome, we just have to be very careful that, like, I think the first thing we have to ask ourselves when we take a portrait is what what's important here. Mm -hmm. So if it's all about the motorcycle, then great because it has good light. But if it's about our model, then she's not very well lit. Like the the flare is kind of like taking on her face. We can't see very well like her expression or so. Yeah. We just have to be very very careful with those kind of things. And then also like because we are in control with portraits let's always be very cautious about composition and what kind of background we have for our models or our subjects. So you have like a bunch of different places where you could frame her face or her head here. So just be careful to not have like these little subtle lines. 
mm-hmm. um, over her neck or her eyes or in general the face. Yeah. So my thing with this now, see, Lolly, tell me if I'm right on this, but my thought. I know Chad is a great photographer. I just don't, I'm not seeing that in this picture. Um, what it feels like in this picture is like, like, like you've described, we have somebody that has a really nice camera that literally walked up and took the shot. Um, and that's why I give it a ding of like below what I would expect from Chad. Uh, okay. Because it's like from head height, we're not really, it has a, a, a beautiful bokeh. And maybe this is like a, you know, the, like maybe this is Brennizer kind of portrait like shot, but we have all this ground and all this negative space with these weird dirt tracks over here, ground that's really not doing anything for me. We have this, like, this is where kind of in my mind, the background starts to get really lovely right around here and then going all the way up. Um, the pose for me also like is not very flattering. Like the way that her hips are positioned, her tummy is out and her hips are not exaggerated. So it almost looks like she has a tummy and no butt. When in reality, there's a really great figure there, but we didn't do a good job of like revealing it. The motorcycle feels like a prop that's not really used and this person is just kind of standing in front of it. Um, so I love the light. I like the way it's post-produced. I love the, you know, where, I just think there was a lot more that could have been done in the photograph. Yeah. I think as photographers, sometimes we just love like something very specific. Like in this case, maybe he he was just loving the light, and uh, we we tend to forget like what really matters. So we just always have to be like very very critical about like what's our background, what's our light like, um, like the pose of our subjects. Like everything you said, I I totally agree. And I, I that that thing on the ground, it's like really bothering me a lot so yeah so for me i mean because I, I always like to give people a place to go you have a really interesting element here the motorcycle so what if we actually stepped up to the motorcycle or used a longer lens and use that to like essentially frame out all this crap on the bottom like so we shoot through the motorcycle maybe through the reflection of the motorcycle to capture her portrait you know while she's kind of standing there walking towards the bike and maybe being backlit by the sun that would be something really interesting compelling to me um versus this kind of what what's going on there but just i, I want to give them an idea of a place to go with this yes i agree with the, the different lens definitely a longer lens would have helped a lot yeah okay chad seiford we don't have just at chad seiford for instagram um cute little shot of a bride looks like on a beach yeah okay. are we getting closer to the water yeah okay all right um Okay, I have a number. Okay. You ready? Yes. Three, two, I'm stuck between four and a five. Whoa, you okay. got a six, okay. Me too, I do have a six. All right, tell me. Um, well, it's just like a, it's, it feels more editorial than wedding photography. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, there's not, mm, it's not like a great image, but it's not much to, say about it for me like i'm not gonna complain about much (laughs) it's just uh what can be done better in order for like our clients or for our portfolio and it's it feels a little bit boring yeah the light is gorgeous and it's just like a it could be like a stock photography right like the photo that you will use like you will buy on the internet for like advertise a place or something but one of the things that i normally do in, in like when I shoot in uh, in a beach is like just make sure your surroundings are beautiful. Mm-hmm. And in this case, we're like talking a little bit more like the same as with the with the grass. Like we have some like dead plants over there, you know. Like just make sure everything yeah. is gorgeous around your your subjects. Yeah, I'm kind of highlighting like. I agree with you, and I, and I think I could be swayed for the five, six. You know, what's interesting is that there, there's some things that are really nice about this. Like, I love the way that her hands in the hair, and you have this, like, nice triangle right here. It leads down to the kick to the hips. We have that shape and figure, and the light is really working nicely, and, and that's beautiful. And I love the way that these lines lead right down and into her. 
Um, but I, I also agree with you that like, I've been to a lot of these locations, like Cancun has actually a lot of these types of spots that look almost identical to this. Um, and I'm not, like you said, a huge fan of like the dead grass and even like these, these, I don't even know what kind of plant that is, but they grow all over the beach. I don't know that's like, like I would almost just rather see blue water behind her. You know what I mean? Like have her walk towards the, the sand and just see blue water. These remind me of like, beach weeds like that's what i think of them as is like weeds on the beach type thing yeah i think like the photographer saw like the opportunity of having these lines and this composition where like she could be centered and it's okay because we have beautiful sky but we also have to take like pay attention to what's on the ground like it's so interesting seeing like we've seen already three or four images where the ground is like taking like a third of the image and it's not that yeah, interesting. It's not interesting. It's not pretty. It's not. So we just have to be very cautious about it too. Yeah, really focusing on placing. You know, what goes into the frame needs to be the parts of the image that are most interesting. When you also do this kind of shot, Chad, just make sure that you rough up the sand a little bit to get rid of like tire tracks, um, that kind of stuff that really pulls you out of the photograph. But I do love what's going on in the middle. I I agree. It has a very editorial vibe to it, and we have that shape back in the body with you know that we kind of lost in this shot. We have that shape right there. Yeah which is really pleasing to look at. Um, okay, Jason Berry, he's actually a, a local California guy. Another friend of the studio, Jason Berry of Jason Berry Photography. This is uh, Zion, right? Or, or not Zion, this is um, Yosemite. Oh, that's beautiful, it's such a beautiful place. It is a I'm really okay. gorgeous spot. It's amazing. You know, I've seen a lot of photographers take this shot and I'm always curious if, like, is it easier to just because if, if you were actually taking this shot, you know, to get from that peak over to the peak where you're standing, it would take you a really long time. So A, either it's just another random photographer that happens to be shooting your couple while you're taking their pictures, like you're standing right here and you're shooting them. And then you could just Photoshop out the actual photographer. Or B, maybe you bring a drone and you fly it from that spot over to the other spot to shoot them. Um, yeah but maybe someone can chime in as to how these shots are, are taken because I imagine it would take a while to get to that other angle. I, I didn't think about the drone, uh, but that totally makes sense. Um, I will, what I've done, I've never done something like this. I think it's like super pretentious and amazing when people like get to like direct their couples all the way from there. Like we use a phone, you know, like I call them and hey guys, you need to do this and this and this. Um, but when, when the phone works, yep. <laughs> when the, yeah, <laughs> when there is a signal, yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, you got a number? I do. It's hard to think what would be better about this. Okay. No fly zone on national parks. Oh, it, uh, Carlo says it's a no fly zone on national parks, and Yosemite is a national park, so. Okay, so, so if it's not drone. Like, he actually did like, a, like all the heavy work here. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I got a number three, two, and I'm at an eight. Uh, you have an eight, I have a seven, okay. Um, well, for me, it's an amazing shot and I love that it's vertical. Like mm -hmm. it's actually giving me this sense of- um, Height? Like how, yeah, how, yeah. how, what amazing place it is, right? Just yeah. because of choosing a vertical instead of a, a landscape. What I would love is the same as in the, the images before, that we could see a little bit more about them than just two people standing. That yep. would be the thing that will give it a nine for me. Yeah. Like it would definitely, I just need a little, like even when they are getting ready for the shot, like just shooting through that moment would give you a little bit more than just the couple standing. Because the hardest part it's literally already done. It's a gorgeous place. Like the sunset is amazing. The post processing is beautiful. I love that you can see. I love that the, all the detail in the image. It's just that part that it's so important that shows a little bit more about our couple. No, I, I agree 100% that now, granted, I don't know how wide this is and if it's even safe. So if this is not a safe shot for photographers to be taking, please don't go and replicate it. I'm, I'm seeing this shot more and more, which leads me to believe that it is a safe shot um, to, to be capturing your couples in. But dancing up there, 
if that's like if that's a narrow I, I can't tell what they're standing on so if that's narrow yeah they're not going to dance and i wouldn't even put them there but hopefully it's safe and i agree that if they were doing something it would be awesome also this is one of those shots where i'm starting to see this shot a lot right we we're all starting to see this shot a lot online i think the very first version of this was like oh my gosh that's award winning and it's not so much that the um you know like you said the work of this photograph is in getting there like yes. getting there is where the work is and for that you deserve you know a high five for anyone that's capturing this shot um unless you're stealing it from someone else who's other actually then then, then you deserve like a <laughs> pat on the back maybe i don't know um but w because so many people have done this i would be looking for ways to make this just a little bit more unique and for me popping a light just behind this rock, aiming it in, or putting a light just behind them and angling it forward so they get a little bit of a glow would make that difference of now, okay, it's super unique. And then finding a perspective where maybe we can build in a little bit more layering into the shot and have something in the foreground that kind of leads up to them. I love that they've left these other mountains in the background because, because Jason left those in the background, that's what gives us that sense of like height and perspective. The only thing here is there's two white spots where if this went to print, those like little white pieces of rock would actually stick out quite a bit. And I'd probably just nix those in Photoshop so they don't. That's the only like white things in the shot other than the dress that are kind of pulling my eye. But I agree with you. And if, if it were safe to have them in action, oh man. That would be like, amazing. Like, as I said, like you don't have to ask them to jump. Like at least like when they're like walking towards like the location, you know, like true. Just like shoot through. Yeah, walking wait until they get there. Like and that that's a, like an advice for absolutely every single portrait. Just shoot through, and I sometimes love it. you will get better image. That shot of like them helping each other out to that spot, walking with each yes. other. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, this is a cool shot. It's really cool. Now. I know that this is outside of what you would typically be doing, but I do think you're still going to have some great thoughts on it. So you got a number? I do. Okay. I got a number. I, three, two, and eight and a seven. All right. You're liking it. Yeah, you're digging it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And maybe it's also because I, I normally don't see these kind of images very often. So don't like, don't mind me. It could be like a different number. It's just because I'm so used to seeing a bride in a room and, like seeing so many images like that, and when I see something like this, it's like, oh, refreshing. Uh, but definitely has nothing to do with the rest of the images. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, for me, it's a, it's a great angle. Uh, it, it makes me like feel something, like like at least like, like it's it's um, dynamic. Yeah. And it's just like the only thing for me is like, I think that the left light is like overpowered. I wish that light wasn't that hard. Like that would be it for me. I love the background. I love like pretty much everything about this image. This shot has me thinking like, um, and I think you got me swayed too on the eight. I, I, I think I would probably step this up to an eight, maybe even a little bit higher, but it's, it's a really great image. And I, I kind of feel like the only thing, so first of all, I'm wondering how this photographer got this because if this is actually on the the wall of a cliff, that's crazy. Like, you know, that that's pretty nuts to be shooting up there. It's also nuts that you'd have like a perfect Rembrandt light on his face. And that's what makes me think that like, okay, this is probably staged in a studio somewhere or shot yeah. in a controlled environment um, because mm -hmm. that would be difficult. But they've done such a great job of mimicking sunlight, like the tones on the skin, the way that it looks, the blues and the shadows, like it looks like sunlight. I think the only thing that has me like wanting more is I want a set of like, I want context for this background. So like, I can't really tell what that background is. Now, if this is staged, that would make sense to me, like why they would want the background to be blurred out. But if it were, if this was actually in Yosemite and they're, you know, they're climbing, I want to see more of that background and info, like I want to see it sharper basically and more of it so I can have a context of just how crazy this is. The only other thing that's bugging me are the little white flecks. I can't tell if these things are like, is this water down below that's glistening? Is it dust that's coming off the wall? Right now it just feels a little bit like distracting from the image. Um, but it's such a cool like commercial vibe to it. That's, that's the thing. I totally think it's staged and I, I don't 
like I definitely think it's it's a flash coming in, and that's why I think if it wasn't that harsh, it would be mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but those little things, I think they're added on Photoshop, and it's kind of like why it makes it more um, dynamic. But I see what you're saying too. Like it's just um, uh, because I feel it's staged. Uh, I don't. I'm not looking for like other people trying to climb up. Yeah. But, uh, I think it's a great image anyway. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Oh, do we credit? Okay, this is Karpati Gabor of Lakeside Wedding Photography. This definitely isn't a groom, so. <laughs> Maybe it's a groom. On his wedding day. Yeah. Okay, Kip Piers of Piers Paris Photography. Piers or Paris Photography. This is kind of an interesting little image. This looks like a shot of the team while they're going out to a photo shoot, almost. Oh yeah, could be. Because yeah. isn't that like a? Oh, I don't know. CPS? Is it CPS? Yeah, I thought it was CPS. Maybe it's not CPS. Uh, I don't know. It's, um, yeah, okay. All right, what do you think? Well, let's give it a number. I have, I have a number. I'm going with three, two, and... All right. It's a nice professional shot. Yeah, I think, like... It could be just like a situation where you're with your friends and you have your camera and you happen to like the light and you shoot it. It's just like the composition for me is pretty off. Like we have, he's not dead center and we have like all the right part of the frame with nothing in it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not fully including the kayak or whatever he's doing. Like the action is pretty slow, which is okay. Like not all the photos have to be like, like super powerful and in the action area but it's just uh, like a like a random snapshot for me like I just like the light but yeah it's not it's not doing much more for me I I like that he's you know I like that he's walking towards that open side of the frame and that's where he's looking towards um, mm -hmm. so composition that works for me but I do get the sense of like like you said I don't really know what he's doing or why he's out there um, I, I don't really have a set of context for that. Maybe it's because we're not wide enough on the image. I just know that he has a boat and they're, he's in the water, maybe crossing or something like that. Um, the main thing for me, though, I love the light. I don't like the sepia kind of tone to it. And I'm going to press V just to go fully black and white. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more um, contrast as well as a little bit more clarity. And I think you instantly get to something that's a lot more interesting visually to look at. Um, it felt like a little bit flat overall to me. I don't know if you can see that change. Do you see it on your side? Totally, so th yeah. this is before, this is like after. Well, I think it's processed on purpose. Like that's kind of like personal preference of the photographer. And I totally see what you're saying. Like I'm sure when, when we have students, we always tell them that because a person is walking in one direction, you have to leave like room in the frame for it. But like there, like it's not justified in this situation because of all the left side we have. So you either pull, like you have to step back, so you can see like the whole thing, and then you leave that room, or then you start your frame right where the hand starts, basically. So you can it kind of makes sense for the composition. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it's interesting to look at though. All right, yeah. let's go on to the next one. Oh, I love this. Orlando yeah. Suarez Viridian images. Okay. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I have a number. Okay. You ready? Three, yes. two. Okay, you have a. Nine. I have a nine. I'm. I'm. Okay, I have I'm an eight point five. If that's okay. That's about where I'm at too. I was between an eight okay. and a nine. In a nine, yes. It's a gorgeous image. Like, seriously, beautiful. Good job, Orlando. Um, the place is amazing, obviously, but then at least here we have one little piece of thing that is giving me more information about the couple, and it's just the bride with the dress folded over her arm. Mm -hmm. That's, like, it's, I, that, it's just pointing out something that it's very small, but it's just a little bit different because they're actually kissing that normally we ask people to stay away from kissing because faces look funny, but it's just giving me a little bit more about the connection of them and about how the bride kind of, she cares about the dress, but not that much because she's not, 
she's not looking for the dress to be fully like on the ground and this majestic image of my dress and the, the background. No, it's about me kissing my groom in front of this beautiful waterfall. So you're so, saying that you like the dress in her hand? I do love that. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's what I like the most about this image. Like, obviously not. The, the, the background is gorgeous. It's what I like, I like the most. But it, that little thing of the bride having the dress up is giving me a, li a little piece of information about them. That it's like they, they don't care much about the dress or about how it looks. They care about them. And that's why I love the photo. I like it. I mean... I can see your perspective on it, and I like that explanation, that view of it. I, I personally, I still have a hard time. Like, you want but it. I just want the dress out. It would look so beautiful. It was spread out like. Of course, but you know that's the photo that we always see. It is. That, uh, that's expected one. I I love what this shot is. I, I like it for what it is. I do notice that there's um, a bit of flash that's kicked into it. I like that it's like subtle. Um, but you can see a little bit of that shadow that kind of comes across, not anything that's like a deal breaker or anything like that, but, um, I think it's a really great job balancing that. And honestly, the only thing that I'm, I'm kind of, the only thing that I'm stuck on and not giving it more, I love by the way that they frame them between the two waterfall spouts. It would have been fantastic if you could get their heads up here by getting a little bit lower. Um, I'm, I'm drawing against it, Lolly. I'm loving it. Yeah. So when I did this, yeah. So only if you end up not cutting off the water, you know, because the water is really beautiful to see where that waterfall is going. But if you can get a tiny bit lower to get their heads up, that'd be great. Really, the main ding that I'm giving it is I'm not a huge fan of the way it's processed right now. The um, the it feels like the greens are a little bit overly warm, and it feels like the blues are a little bit overly, you know, kind of blue. And so I. I I love this kind of like Scandinavian toned like image. And I think to get to that look, you would have it just a little bit more muted on like the, the saturation. Um, yeah. That's my only real kind of pullback yeah, on this. For me, and I, I, I really, um, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, the only thing for me, it's the, the, the post process is the Dodge and Burn. Like if you just get closer to the couple, you can use a little bit more light on their faces and less light on the dress. Like just where the dress is on the arm, it's a little bit hot. Like it's bright there and we could use like some more light on their faces and I think it would be awesome. For sure. And I'm almost feeling like, like getting a little bit of a brush like onto the waterfall, you know, just to kind of like brighten that up a little bit and kind of make it punchy and standing out a little bit more. I mean, this is such a cool image and there's so much that you could do to this to like, yeah, I would like it, so. make it That's pop. Um, so just something super simple, but okay, Gorgeous. beautiful shot. Okay, this is Ryan Littlefield of Ryan L Imagery. Okay, let's take a look. All right, you got a number? I do. Okay, three, two, and four and a four. Four and a four. Okay, we're on it. You know, okay. yeah. they yes. they they lit the image, and I like the balance of like the how they're lit to the background and everything like that. And for that, I was gonna give them a plus, and then I gave them like two minuses because of how much of the crappy background they included in the shot. Ryan, all that beach is not doing any favors, and that's my main thing. But I want to hear what Silali has to say about this. I do have a problem when we see images that are like well lit, but there is like no source of light that should be kind of like supporting that that light. You know, like it's very artificial. The the flash, yeah. yeah. But it it doesn't feel natural, and sometimes it's not expected to feel natural, but because you erased it, yes. Like there is no sun, the sun at least is not coming from there. So why is there light coming from her side? Mm -hmm. that, yes, that doesn't make much sense to me. So do, we just have to be very careful when we're doing like our, like these kind of ideas, we just have to know what kind of light we need to use just in order for it to look more natural. And also like we already talked about, it, about this, be careful with the background. You have like a straight line coming through her face or her head and you just need to frame that person like mm -hmm. better 
and um, the pose, I mean, I guess it's like just a yoga pose and it's fine. We just have to, um, for these kind of poses, you need a longer lens and just a different background. So it looks better for, for the model. Yeah, and my, my main thing, if there's one thing I would say to Ryan, it's just, I'm not sure what your subject is here because we're just so far pulled back and this person's in action doing something it just feels like I can't tell if this shot is really about the person doing something in this scene or if it's about the scene itself or if it's about the person itself. You know, like I, I just feel like we're we're too far back and this whole like beachfront that we're showing is just so busy and distracting from the image, like all this detail over here. That's really not doing much for me. Um, that would be my issue. I, I would I would decide like what what is this shot? If this is a shot about her in its pose. I would get down low, punch in tighter, frame her maybe over the clouds, show some of these rocks, show some of the ocean on this side. And like Sitlali said, you would, you would light in a way that feels a little bit more part of the scene. Honestly, in this scene, I don't even know if I would add a light. If I did, it would probably be coming from behind to kind of mimic the sun and kind of just punch up her brightness a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sean Reefman of Sean Reefman Photography. Do we? T yeah, we did mention Ryan. Okay. Okay. All right. You got a number? I do. Okay. Three, two, and. What a four again. Okay. Well, we just, for me in these cases, there are so many things to think about, right? Like the light is not the greatest, obviously it's natural light. We just have to be very careful. Like if we, it was just a moment taken, then okay, there are things that we can improve. But if it's a portrait that I think it's a portrait because that was a category that we're submitting here, uh, we have full control. So first of all, you can't place your subjects where the light is not working for you. Um, second, you have to make sure your background works. And right now the background is very messy and very difficult to read what is happening with them. Yeah. And then the pose, like it's not being the greatest for them. It's like the connection feels a little bit off. I agree. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. It, it's mainly the busyness of the background for me that's kind of killing it. And the, there's just so much going on here. But as one of those stolen moments, you know, during a wedding, you might you might still deliver this. Um, but if it's just a portrait, there is a lot of room to work with. Yeah, and, and in regards to the background, you have like a beautiful foliage in the back, like that green part on the top that I'm guessing is green, obviously we're not seeing it, uh, will be a way better background than that um, piece of wood that is coming down. For sure. Like the railing, so just be like, you just have to go a little bit lower and that will improve your photo right away. Getting their heads up here. I love your, your drawings. I'm so literally good. just doing it for you at this point. I'm so appreciative. I'm just going to keep drawing. Okay, we'll put Sitlali's signature right here. That's done. There we go. Love it. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our last one. This is Sean Reefman, SR Photography. Okay. Do you feel like, I always feel like it's odd when you pull back so far and you're taking an environmental portrait, but then you have them look into the camera. I do. I it's do. not quite. Okay. You got a number? Yeah, I do. Three, two, and oh, I'm stuck between a three and a four. I'm going I'm going harsh on this one. See, okay. Lolly with the five. Get tell me why this is what you think the typical pro would do. Well, as you were saying, like definitely you wouldn't ask someone to step like so far in the back and then just ask them to look mm -hmm. at the camera like it doesn't make much sense but what i do like about what the, what the photographer did here is finding a good place to show the area or the venue or the destination place where they they chose to have the session or this wedding so it's a this is a good place to show it it's just the the, the placement of the subjects is what is not working for me for this photo is but that's why at some point a little bit higher so it's the pose and the placement. Like at least, like right now, you have like this, this black thing yep. behind them. So this just, one. just actually, exactly, just actually frame them there. Like yeah. Make sure they are like a little bit to the left, and or or your right, their left, 
and they will be better framed immediately. And also when you were using bridges or things like this, it's a little bit difficult because the, the actual uh, railing is kind of covering half of their body. Yeah. So it's definitely not like the best place to have them standing. That rail looks so high too. Like it, it's like there's two rails right here that. I know. Oh, that looks really high. But definitely, like, getting over the black. I, I do agree with you that, like, they found a very beautiful angle to capture the entire scene. That That's 100% for sure. I, once again, like like you said, you have this perfect frame in the background, which was missed. Yes. That frame right there. And then probably bringing them forward against that, that little uh, rail just to, like, make them a little bit larger in the scene as well as to kind of like, you know, they could, they could almost like interact with the rail. Like why not make this about kind of them talking, you know, like chatting a romantic moment between the two of them, as opposed to looking at the camera from this distance. And then the only other thing for me is like from there dialing into the right composition, like it looked like you had a potential for a possible reflection right here um, that might be missed out on also kicking a little bit more light. So you have this nice light pattern that's landing on this where you could add an additional flash right here to just pin light them and it would look just like they're naturally highlighted in the scene. So put that flash up right here, pin light them and let that whole scene around them darken down a little bit. So like this is just too bright. I can't even write right now. So darken all that down and really draw the eyes right into the couple down here. And I think you'd have something like really compelling to look at. Agreed. Is this a, a weird face again too? Should I draw some eyebrows on him? Yeah, there you go. An no, ear. That's so weird. That's I'm, beautiful. I'm not gonna put hair on him, Silali, because <laughs> I don't have hair. No, you shouldn't because you don't have hair today. That's there we go. So smart. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So now, let's talk about your Patreon. So. We're gonna include the link to uh, Silali's Patreon below where you do actually tutorials um, in Spanish, right? Yeah, everything is in Spanish and the Patreon is called MX Colectivo. Uh, it's basically MX Collective, uh, but in Spanish. And it's Daniel Aguilar and me uh, doing all this video. We have like almost 70 videos already for wedding photographers. So it's like a full year of content, a little bit more. And it's been a good ride. It's been awesome. So it's That's we're rad. sharing a lot there for wedding photographers. That's rad. And then we're going to also throw up the two live workshops that you have coming up in Europe and in Mexico. Yes. Now, what are you going to be teaching at those? Uh, also wedding photography, but it's more related to narrative and storytelling. Awesome. That's kind of our, our most of our work is based on that. So. Well, you, I mean, I would say that's like, you guys are very strong photographers, but in terms of storytelling and just compelling images, you guys have incredible work. I know you've won several Fearless Awards, so I'm sure it's going to be an amazing class. Thank you so much. Yes, we're excited. It's been a, like we've been doing this class, not the same class, but this kind of classes for like o over 10 years. So we know it works. Like we see the, like the difference for and so it's all about paying attention. So it's an interesting one. That's awesome. Well, thank you for joining us here. Yeah. You guys, be sure to check out Silali, her work, follow her. We're going to include all the links below to everything we've discussed in the video. And, well, my name is Pi. We're going to see you guys in the next video. So, see y'all.